When I went back to the uh, spaceport, I basically just accelerated time because it was a little too dark there. I didn't really like that, especially for this next thing that we need to do. I know I said that I have to get this into the high atmosphere and into orbit, but right now what we need to do is sort out a very special system that we're uh, adapting. We haven't really used it before, but we need to use it for this specific uh, shuttle which are these cameras, right? So what you can do is uh, these little radial cameras you can put on your craft. And it's really important to do so, uh, especially for this, this craft, because we need a docking camera. We can't quite see where and how we're docking on this thing. So we want to do that, and I'm going to offset it a little bit because we don't want the camera getting crushed, right? So we want to pull it back like that and then pull it up, uh, down a bit. Yeah, okay, that, good. And that's correct, good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put another one on. Um, we're gonna have two more, so I'm not gonna do this adjacent or I'm not gonna mirror it on the other side. Uh, instead, I'm just going to try to get this in here somehow. Oh, I probably should do it this way. And put it on the wing. Uh, like that. There we go. Um, maybe I do want to mirror it, because I don't want to have to go through and put another one on. So, right there two of them is that one facing the right way it is it's like my backing up cameras basically and then finally uh, I need one on the front do I want it on the front yes I do I need it on the front I need only one of them and I want to put it if I can uh, that's gonna be in a weird spot so I'm gonna have to do it over here but I need, I need a camera for landing as well. So not just one for docking, but one for also landing. Okay, I put one at the front and I did put one at the back. Um, it's kind of in a weird spot, but I think it'll work. All right, so we gotta, we gotta set up these cameras. And the way you do that is um, you have it ID'd. So like this one we want as um, external camera one, right? FOV marker, oh, oh, oh that's kind of cool. Uh, we want it as one. These should be, oh, no, that's not what I wanted. If that's two, can I change this one to three? Because that one's also two. If I change that to three, does it change it to three? No, two, three, good, okay. And then four on the front. A little tiny thing to click on, three, Four and finally five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. Uh, I like that a lot. Oh, I just realized I need one more. And this is also for docking purposes. So I want this one. Um, how, actually, where do I want it? Probably like right in between these. I've got an idea. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to move that up. And I'm going to move this like so. So this one can see how we're doing as far as height is concerned back there. So that one, so that was five on the bottom. This one would be, uh, if I can click on it. All right, so that's six. Okay, perfect. Now save, launch. Let's check these out. Before we go, this is going to be one entire test, making sure that the cameras are working right. And you see them on the display within the cockpit. And then we're going to actually go straight up into the atmosphere. Perfect. So, or high atmosphere. I keep saying that. Uh, who? Let's go to him. All right. So we're going to test out these cameras. Uh, so many things. Is it? Camera initialize. Okay. 
So this should be one. Yeah, okay, so that's our docking port. So imagine we're docking back there. We turn this one on, external. And we go next. Okay, so that's upside down. That's not ideal, but I think it works. Uh, how do I want to do this? Yeah, let's let's also go to this one. So you would turn on camera, external. Do, do, do. So that one. Uh, maybe I should put those two on that screen. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's switch through. That's the front mounted camera. That's the back. That shows the top. Okay, that's that's perfect. I like how that shows up. This one should be that one. And then um, we'll go on his side instead of the other ones. And I think this all works, which is pretty rad. Uh, I think, okay, camera, external, boom. Wow, I like that a lot. So while I'm docking, I'll be controlling myself with RCS, obviously. And for the most part, I will be uh, probably under whoever's commanding the main uh, craft, which would be whoever's in that first seat. What's up, buddy? Oh, we have two cameras. Oh, gosh, there's like... There's screens all over the place that we can use for cameras. This is rad. So I would be looking out this one, docking backwards. And I could alternatively also maybe on the middle screen there yeah let's see if we can get that so docking select a reference part in target management so then i would set the part for you know our docking port and then we would see that so we would use these three screens to dock that's how we would do this and we wouldn't use any you know we wouldn't be in this view we would be in the the view of the actual uh cockpit itself which is crazy to think about okay now we need to go through our startup procedure, turn off our engines. We hit space, space, space. We hit one, three, six. We hit one again, make sure, no, no two, to turn those on. We're gonna hit this, and you're gonna witness something really rad that we don't really get to do, which is how we're gonna get into this, get, get this into space. Very bright day off over there. Interesting. All right, we're going to hit our RCS, pull up, and this is how we go into space. Very unique. <laughs> because this is rockets, you gotta remember, these aren't like engines, like air breathing engines necessarily, like the uh, Sabre engines or whatever we were using for our other shuttles. These are, these are rockets, so we're gonna treat it more like a rocket. So we're gonna kind of go more straight up. It's It gets a bit of a wobble, but that's what the RCS is for. Keeps it under control. And once once we start getting to a certain height, we start stabilizing and creating a uh, gravity turn, basically. So you see our air intake is going down, right? We're getting less air and the engines are consuming more fuel. Easy math, right? The, the higher up you get, the less efficient they become as far as burning fuel. But that's, you know, that's fine. We're, these are meant to just get us into orbit at the moment. These won't be on the final Thor shuttle. It's just all testing purposes. So here we go. This is when we start doing our gravity turn. You'll hear the engines kind of starting to switch over to be more rockety. They're very loud. Look, the moon. That's kind of a cool shot. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's turn these on. I love it. All right, so map. Uh, we will see that our apoapsis is currently almost at 100,000, which is fine. Uh, let's go up to our apoapsis. In fact, I'm going to turn RCS off. The reason why is those front RCS ports that keep our nose down uh, to solve the issue of the nose pulling up and backwards, they consume our fuel, so we don't want to have them on when we're not needing them to be. So we can full throttle. I hate when it gets in one ear like that, the sound. 
Oh, by the way, totally have a new graphics card coming, so I'm really excited to see uh, what my frame rate will be like with the Aurora and the Thor and the potential Loki all in one spot. Not super great. All right, as you see, our fuel, and this is congruent with what I've noticed in testing, as it slowly sh shuts down the engines, we don't quite have enough to get in orbit. We do if we do it perfect, but we don't quite have enough to get in orbit around Kerbin, which is fine, right? That's That wasn't the goal here. It's not to get in orbit of Kerbin and then back down and all that stuff. We'll have a shuttle for that. This shuttle is simply just going through all of the potential speed bumps that we might run into, including re-entry, which is one thing that we definitely need to test because there will be situations where we have the Thor re-enter atmosphere uh, into Kerbin. Then we collect all the science data that it would bring back instead of just using the Loki off and on because maybe the Loki's already doing something. So what we would do is we would bring this one back, we would land it, we'd switch out crew, and then we would relaunch it. And the way that this thing is going to launch to get to the Aurora, to get into atmosphere to begin with, or out of atmosphere, is, is with a rocket. So what you would do is you would do one of the orange tanks on the back here. So that would be the middle. And then you attach two more, right? So boom, boom. So you have a middle one, you have two. And then that's kind of your main stage to get into uh, into orbit. So it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, design wise. All right, so let's do. I don't want to land this in water, but it is fine to do so. Uh, where will this land us? Let's figure out. Not there, that's for sure. Okay, well, let's let's try water landing, right? That's part of the test. We're gonna quick save in case things crash. So, boom. Okay, come back into the atmosphere. We're gonna pull this down a bit, like so. And we're going to time warp. Now you'll notice this thing is a lot more stable coming back in than anything we've created before. I don't know how I've managed to do that, but I have. And the primary thing to consider is that this is a fuel tank and then there's another one right there. So that whole green part that you see is a fuel tank. But that means that when we're out of fuel, all of our weight is back here. When we're full on fuel, most of our weight is centered. So what I want to do is I, I want to transfer whatever fuel I have left to the front. It'll help mildly, but it will help. All right, let's go a little further into the atmosphere. We are going to need to turn RCS on. It will help keep us the rest of the way stable. As you see, we slow down fairly quickly. Um, Let's level out a bit. I do want to see just real quick. Yeah, we're not getting any stalling. Maybe we should stall our wings a bit. We don't really need to, though. Also, frame rate has a really hard time with re-entry on this thing. Let's turn off the lights. And we'll gain a few extra frames per second, which will help. Another thing I'm looking forward to with that new graphics card. In fact, I won that graphics card. Story to come later. Let's go forward. Bit. Uh, this thing is actually remaining more stable than it ever has in my testing. So maybe the minor things that I've added to it in the meantime have really helped the balance. Um, minor. I don't think that it will freak out until we start getting sub 500 meters a second. I like how the clouds are kind of moving with us. <laughs> Alright, so let's Hmm. How do I want to do this? Do I want to turn the RCS on to keep it stable? Possibly. I actually just want to slow us down a bit. So if I pull up, do we go up in altitude? We Oh, let's turn the RCS back on. It'll stabilize us. See how those work? They're very, very clever. Keeps us from going crazy out of control. In fact, if I added those to our other shuttles, they'd work flawlessly. Uh, what I can do is turn on our air brakes. That will help. If I turn off RCS, my hands are off the keyboard. It's just sitting there perfect. I don't know if this could be any better. Back to what I said about, I don't know how I've managed to do it, but I've engineered a shuttle that actually works really, really well. And I'm really proud of it. 
But this one is not intending to land like an aircraft. Uh, our lighter version of the Thor, the Loki, will uh, definitely be able to do this stuff. But we haven't tested that yet, and I don't really need to. All right, so now we're getting to that point where you can kind of see it wants to pull that nose up. And we're going to start needing to use the, um, the RCS in a bit. It's very important to just keep this thing as under control as possible. The more under control that it is, the less likely it will be to freak out when you hit your parachutes. Um, I have noticed, and I did test it on my test game, if it's coming in upside down and you hit your parachutes, it will right itself back up before it lands, just because of the way that I have the parachutes. I only have the parachutes on the top, I have none on the back. Uh, I know aircraft oftentimes, when people design them in Kerbal, oh, you're starting to see it. See, I'm starting to kind of go more like down this way. It it kind of turns into a falling toolbox after a while. The glide on it isn't super great, so we're going to point our nose to keep our velocity up a little bit, even though I have air brakes on. So, yeah, once, um, once you kind of get a really good aircraft, oftentimes people will put uh, the parachutes on the back to slow it down for landing and all that, but it, the, the need isn't there for this thing. This is more of a spacecraft than it is an aircraft. We've got to keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to turn off the air brakes. We're going to bring it in. All right, we have a lot of time to go on height here, so we're going to bring it to about 5,000 that I'm going to level off. We're still losing speed even though we're nose diving. It's got a lot of drag. I could probably fix a lot of that drag, in fact. I just haven't yet. I'm gonna turn RCS on because that's, we're getting that sub 500 wobble, which happens. And we're gonna pull up. Uh, it wanted to, wanted to flip backwards, still wants to. Okay, this is fine. We're still good, still good. And what I want to do so actually just kind of keep it going. I don't really need to change anything at the moment. Just let it keep falling. If I turn off RCS, we're going to flip backwards. Uh, it's going to try to. And we're at 2000. We're actually minorly able to gain altitude if we pull up, which is kind of funny. But that's not what we want to do. So we're gliding pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit my parachutes. And that will slow us down the rest of the way. Now you'll notice that I'm, I don't have RCS on. I have SAS on, but I don't have RCS on. And it's staying pretty stable. The nose is wanting to dip a bit. That's just because it's, you know, trying to slow us down. As soon as these parachutes deploy fully, it should be level. Like I wanted it to be the first time I showed you this, but not so much now. And this is my first water landing. So I'm hoping that it doesn't just explode, which is why I just quick saved. Uh, it's, it's a good test, you know, figuring out if it'll land in water or not. If we lose a bit of money by having the craft explode, awesome. It shouldn't destroy the cockpit. So let's put our gears out. That was kind of weird timing, but it worked. And look at that. I told you, I told you it was perfectly aligned. You didn't believe me. You were thinking to yourself, oh, Zen, it's not going to, it's not going to remain level but it's because I have four back here, two on this side and two on this side, and then I've got two here and two here. Because of that, it holds up the fat end of it. It's clever. It's clever engineering. Uh, do I want to slow my descent? I do. So we're gonna hit seven. I'm gonna hit one to turn those off. I'm gonna use the rest of my fuel at about now to just slow myself down. That has to be the most glorious water landing we've ever... Look, it's a boat. It's literally a boat. Seven, no, six. One, two. Does it go forward? It does. The thing is literally a boat. Okay, we're, we're done going forward. I just wanted to see if it would actually float. This is brilliant. I love this thing. I mean, it says a lot that... The pinnacle of the Kerbin technology 
that they have created is the Aurora and the Thor. At this point in time, is the pinnacle of all of that they've been working forward to, or working for in order to go out to the other bodies in the system, uh, inhabit them, and also search for answers on their creator. If you were Synethian, of course. If you are Naturian, you're excited by the fact that there's this really cool technology, but you're not really sure what it's used for, right? You don't want to go to these other planets necessarily. You want to stay home because you're a prude. And just maybe they want to use it uh, militarily or to... You, you, the way that the Synethians are actually kind of marking it, marketing it to them, is that they're learning so much that they're making lives easier for people on Kerbin. And maybe by going to another planet, they'll be able to learn uh, about the ecology on those planets and possibly be able to feed even more Kerbins or Kerbals because uh, you don't, you know, you don't necessarily think about it, but food is a, a big resource and Kerbals need to eat, right? So maybe they can find a way to infinitely feed their entire planet and it'll make the Naturians happy because the Naturians can stay home and have all the food that they want. We did get a lot of funds back. Uh, it costs like 150000 or something like that, 180000 and we got most of that back. That's pretty good, so most of that is in fuel. I like that. Uh, done. We could have run science tests, but we didn't need to. That wasn't part of the experiment there. The experiment was just making sure that it could return safely. Now that it's done that, uh, we need to set up the next part of the experiment. We need to go to the moon and try actually using it as a lander. Oh gosh, all of my missions are freaking out at me that I have. What are those two? Oh, that's locate things. Okay, that's fine. Also, I have another one of these. Jeez. I did set up another satellite, by the way, and I totally destroyed it. I brought it back in. Oh, I've wanted to film that too. I totally forgot about it. I brought it back in and uh, tested the decommissioning. Okay, so what did I want to do on the moon? I want to land in a crater with one of the uh, Thor shuttles. Uh, the way to do that is we need to launch with a rocket from Kerbin to the moon, detach said rocket, do an Apollo-style landing, uh, land it, because you got to remember when, it, when the Thor goes to a moon, the Aurora will be in orbit as a refueling area. So when it comes back up, it will refuel and be able to go back down and back up and back down and so on and so forth. So we got to test that uh, scenario by having a fueling station, which is why I said you would have three orange rockets to refuel the sucker uh, in orbit around the moon. So that way it could go possibly up and down twice and then back to Kerbin uh, with a re-entry. So that's the goal for that. I did want to quickly check before we start working on that. How are these doing? These are kind of getting along. That's gotten a little further. And our Rumbler Rover Mark II is still quite a ways out. We have uh, a, a year on the Horizon Probe and then just uh, you know, 115 days left on the Rover. Well, I think once we finish testing the Thor, we'll finish these missions off, uh, which will be great. But we have to get the Thor into orbit, so I need to develop a launch system for that. That will not destroy the Thor in the process, which is the most important part.